Good day grade 11 welcome to week 17. In this lesson we're going to carry on with gases and their gas laws and we're going to talk about the combined gas law which from its name is pretty obvious that we're now going to combine the three laws that we've learned so far and put them together and then use them in examples. And again I just like to remind you that a litre is the same as a decimeter cubed. So if in the example they use litres, just think in your head decimeters cubed because it's exactly the same unit. Right, let's have a look at this video. These are the three gas laws that we've looked at so far. They each assume that some sort of change has happened um, and they tell us how two variables relate to each other before and after the change. Right, so like Boyle's law here has pressure and volume. We make some sort of change in pressure or in volume and then tells us how the other one is going to respond. Okay, Lussac's law, pressure and temperature, and Charles' law, volume and temperature. Two variables always. Let's say that I had a problem like this though. Let's say that I had like a balloon, okay, and it was a certain volume, and I wanted to increase the amount of air pressure that's pushing on that balloon, and I wanted to cool that balloon way down. And then I wanted to ask the question, what is the new volume going to be? Okay, we can't use any of these three laws here because there are three variables here. New pressure, new temperature, I want to make it colder, and that's going to cause a new volume. So P, V, and T are going to be variables there. So for that, we use the combined gas law, which is sort of a combination of all three of these laws. And you can see how I put it together. It's P1 times V1. That looks a lot like Boyle's law divided by T1 equals P2 times V2 divided by T2. So it's like all of these three rules put together uh, in one law so that I can look at how these three variables respond to each other. I could use this combined gas law um, to solve a problem like this. I have a, uh, a balloon is filled with air at sea level, uh, which is 1.00 atm of pressure, 25.0 uh, degrees Celsius. It's tied to a rock and thrown in a cold body of water. I tie to the rock so that it sinks down in the water, okay, because if I didn't, it would just float on the surface. So tied to a rock, throw it into a cold body of water, and it sinks to the point where the pressure is 4 degrees Celsius, gets colder, and the pressure is 11 atm. So there's much more pressure pushing on this balloon. What will its new pressure be? So I'm going to use this combined gas law to figure this out. First, let's look at the variables that we already have and the variables that we're going to need to solve for. Okay? A 40 liter balloon, that is V1, is filled with air at sea level. So sea level pressure is 1.00 atm and the temperature is 25.0 degrees Celsius. But remember, we're going to have to convert that to Kelvin temperature because we're dealing with gas. We'll do that in a minute though. It's tied to a rock, blah, blah, blah. It sinks to the point where the temperature is 4 degrees Celsius. So we have T2, although we'll have to convert it to a Kelvin temperature. And the pressure is 11.00 atm. So that means that we have P2. What we're going to be solving for is V2. What will its new volume be? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to rearrange the combined gas law here so that we can solve for V2. Here we go. V2 is on this side, so we want to get it alone. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by T2 to get T2 out of the, uh, out of the denominator. All right? Times T2 here, times T2 here. Since the T2 is on the top here and on the bottom here, it cancels out. And I can rewrite this as T2 times P1 times V1 divided by T1 equals P2 times V2. Now again, I want to get this P2 out of the numerator here so that I can get V2 by itself. So I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by P2. That means that these two P2s are going to cancel out. And my final rewritten equation with V2 isolated all by itself is going to be T2 times P1 times V1 divided by T1 times P2 equals V2. As we've said before, if you get a little bit uncomfortable with the idea of uh, V2 being on its own on the right side, I'll just rewrite this so that it can be a little bit easier. V2 on the left, if that makes you comfortable, equals T2 times P1 
times V1 divided by T1 times P2. But all I've done here is I've flipped it around. Okay, so let's go about solving this. The first thing I'm going to want to do is take these two Celsius temperatures and convert them to Kelvins. All right, so I have 25.0 degrees Celsius plus 273 is going to give me uh, 298 Kelvin. And the other temperature that I have to convert is 40.0 degrees Celsius plus 273, and that's going to give me 277 Kelvin. All right, so now that I have these temperatures and the right units to solve for the equation, let's go ahead and put these variables in. Okay, so we have V2 equals T2. T2 is this, equals 277 Kelvin times P1, the initial pressure, which is 1.00 atm times V1, the initial volume, 40.0 liters. Okay. We're going to divide that by T1, again in Kelvin, 298 Kelvin, which is multiplied by P2, the second pressure, which is 11.00 atm. So I'm going to do that math, and my final answer, rounded to three significant figures, is going to be 3.38. Now, what are my units here? Okay, Kelvin over Kelvin, those cancel out. ATMs over ATMs cancel out, and I'm left with liters here. So my final answer is going to be 3.38 liters. That's rounded to three significant figures because there are uh, three significant figures are the lowest number of significant figures that I have in my answer. So my final answer, 3.38 liters. Right, great, Lewins. I think that explained the combined gas law very well. But what I do want to point out to you is something that's very important. At the moment, I know that I've been stressing the fact that liters is the same as decimeters cubed. But at the moment, you will notice that it really doesn't matter what our units are other than temperature. Temperature, temperature always has to be in Kelvin. You always have to convert your temperature to Kelvin, okay? But if your pressure is given in atmospheres, you can use it in atmospheres. If your volume is given in liters or in decimeters cubed or in centimeters cubed, you can use those as long as all the volumes are the same and all the pressures are the same. Okay, so that's important. We will get to another formula called the ideal gas law. Um, I know there's another one, okay, where it is very important to use the correct units. And when we get to that equation, I will explain it to you. But at the moment, if I'm using P, uh, let's make that P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2, it doesn't matter if P1 is in atmospheres as long as, as long as, P2 is also in atmospheres and if V1 is in cubic centimeters that's cool as long as V2 is also in cubic centimeters if it's not if V2 for example is in decimeters cubed then we need to convert it and you convert it by dividing by a thousand because of that cubic but we will do that in more in, in another video, but I just wanted to make sure that you did actually realize that this is very important. But the only thing that has to happen is that temperature at this point has to be converted to Kelvin. Right, so please go practice examples of the combined gas law and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Make sure you can do it. And yeah, have a great day.